Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I am so excited because I just released the new pumpkin science unit. So I wanted to show it to you in action. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and just start showing it to you. But first, please tell me, do you do a pumpkin science unit or do you do a general fall? Or is it something, is it one of your favorites? So just tell, tell us that in the comments and then I'm gonna flip it around and show you guys. So just like with all of the science units I'm making, I'm creating a science unit so you can set up an amazing science table or science center. So a lot of my science units, they come with the same components so you can easily change it out. Um, all of them come with these vocabulary word cards and I put these on a ribbon on a clothespin so I can easily pull them off if I need to during a read aloud so we can talk about vocabulary a little bit more um, specifically. Or if they want to pull them off and touch them and feel them, they can do that too. And then I actually printed the vocabulary cards up smaller for this science table so that way I'm kind of labeling all of the different pieces. So with this science table, this one is set up to explore the, um, the parts of a pumpkin. So there's the parts of a pumpkin little poster, there's pumpkin seeds and a little pumpkin. And one of the pumpkins we, is cut open. Um, and then all of the kind of guts, all the strands are stuck in a baggie. Because a lot of kids do not like, at least I found, um, do not like touching this, but if you put it in a baggie, they can explore and they can touch it and they can feel it um, without getting messy. So it's a really great way for, for them to explore in a way that's comfortable for them. And then it also comes with a read aloud all about pumpkins. And there are pumpkin discovery pages and there are little pumpkin um, science table little cue cards. So that way it just gives them an idea of what to do, sorry about the little little reflection there. It gives them um, kind of like a cue of what to do, like use the magnifying glass to look at the pumpkin and look at the seeds and draw or write what, um, what they see. So that's one um, setup you can do for the science table. And this science table is actually, it's a lack table from Ikea. I wanna say it's about 20 or $30. And then there's also a parts of a pumpkin anchor chart big, so you can make the anchor chart during circle and they can um, label the parts. I did actually draw the ribs on here and I kind of drew the, st the strands so they could see them a little bit better. Excuse me. Um, and then there's also in included in this, I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, but we always plant our pumpkin seeds. So I know some people plant them in a baggie. You can plant them in a little cup. And I like to use clear cups when I plant. That way you can see the roots and you can see what's happening under the soil. You can see kind of when you water it, where the water goes um, and all of that. So you can do either or. And one trick I do is I soak the seeds for anywhere from two to 24 hours because it just um, gets that seed coat kind of um, absorbed with water and they will sprout faster. And then there's also included, and my little guys did this, so this is a pre-K friend and that is a first grader. Um, so they drew what the pumpkin seeds look like now and then they made a prediction of what the pumpkin seeds will look like later. So that's a really fun way for them. You can talk about um, how scientists make predictions on what's gonna happen next and they draw and they write about their predictions and then you can check them. So you could also make these into a little book and put them next to your plant so they can check them. And then there is a growth chart and you can either put one growth chart up or you can put these in your student science journals. And I just, um, this one I just laminated so they can use a dry erase marker with it. So on day one, it was zero tall. So they can just every day use a rainbow ruler. And a rainbow ruler is just a ruler. It's like literally a wooden ruler and I just colored it each inch a different color so they can count how big it is. So they're really just counting the color blocks but they're using a real science tool so that way when they go to use that ruler in first grade or whenever, um, 
and they start actually looking at the numbers, they'll know how to at least like line the ruler up and things like that. So that way they'll be familiar with the tool when they actually are using it um, and using those numbers. Or you can make a bean ruler, which is just some beans I put in some packing tape, and they can count them that way. Or you can always use Unifex cubes too, or any kind of connecting cube. So those that's one way you can set up the science table. You can also um, put out the different parts of, um, or the different life cycle pieces of the pumpkin. So if you go to the pumpkin patch, take a green vine with you, take a green pumpkin, um, bring a flower back to your classroom, and they can feel and touch all the different um, life cycle pieces of a pumpkin. And there is a recording page with it, and then there is a Velcro piece, so they can take it off and then put them in order. And then there's one that isn't Velcro. And then you can also make an anchor chart with these two if you would like. And then you can also just put out a whole bunch of different pumpkins and they can sort them different ways. And you can talk about how some pumpkins are smooth, how some are bumpy. You can also do set up a pumpkin measure it um, activity at your science table. So you can do, and then they I want, would measure them with the Unifix cubes. And then they would sort them if they're short or tall. And I could only find the pumpkin pie pumpkins right now, so you could you can use fake pumpkins or you can use real pumpkins too. It's up to you. And then another, the last science activity um, you could put at the table is a pumpkin weighing activity, and they would put the pumpkin in, and then they would put either chains, counters, or bears, and then they, then they could compare how many chains weighs the same as the pumpkin. And I usually make this dry erase. You can also use these as a worksheet or like a recording page and just print them off on white paper. But I just printed this off and I laminate it so they can use dry erase and then erase it and the next person can use it. And it does come with a little visual and then so does this one. So that way they kind of, it's like a visual um, directions. And then just like with all my other um, science unit, it comes with a little quick parent letter. Um, and it does ask for donations if they would like to. That way, hopefully, you can get some more little pumpkins for your science table. And they would love bringing them in, too. And their pumpkins are usually like a dollar or so. So it's something that a parent could easily um, bring in for you. And then the, here's the journal cover page. And then there is also different kinds of journal pages. Oh, sorry about my toe right there. <laughs> um, there's like lined. And then there's ones with a one line that would be like more for a three-year-old class. So you can either just put them out in the center or you can have, give each kiddo their own journal and they could put, um, you could put all the recording pages in there. It's up to you what you wanna do. And then there is also a pumpkin investigation you can do. So basically you're t at circle time, you would um, talk about the pumpkin. So talk about what it looks like and then you would measure it. And this one I usually do with like a big jack-o'-lantern or like, you know, not like giant, but you know, a good size one, so they can look talk about what the outside, they can measure it, and you can measure about, you can talk about how it's tall and how things are wide, so you can measure it both ways and model that, and then you could cut it open and talk about what the inside looks like, and then you can count it um, and count how many seeds, and I included 10 frames on here um, to make it easier for little learners to count, and you could do this as a group, and then you can fill in the 10 frame, and it's also a great way to um, show kiddos different ways to represent a number. So like I put it in the 10 frames, and then I also wrote it next to the side. And then there is a student recording page with that as well. And with the recording pages, you can do those or not do them, it's up to you. And then as always, you get um, teacher direction pages with everything um, explained for you. And then this is how I keep, how I organize mine because I don't use a binder, so I just put them in these little page protectors. And if there's a recording page, I just put it on the back. And then this um, unit, I'm actually gonna keep together with my Apple unit, which is also in my science curriculum. I'm just gonna put both of those units in here since um, they don't really have props with them because I'm using real pumpkins and real apples for the, um, at the table. Um, do you, uh, um, somebody is asking, would you do the chart in small group or whole group? So it's really up to you. You can do um, the anchor charts either in small group or whole group. I usually do them in whole group 
and then I do that turn and tell a friend or that um, talk to a friend and then they can share out that way um, they're talking to one peer and you get more kids talking and more kids um, using that vocabulary during circle so it's now they're just listening to, listening to one kiddo talking so they do that think pair share and then they can share it out um, to the group and then you can record it on the chart too and I know um, so this is for ages three through kinder but um, some first grade teachers are telling me they're using this too and they're using it more um, for um, small group work so rather than you guys for, um, like for preschool like we're using the um, the anchor charts as a whole group activity they're giving it to their kiddos and they're doing it kind of as a um, as a team and they're each kind of making their own little anchor charts or learning posters so um, first grade teachers are telling me they're using it too and they're loving it so which topic do you do first apples or pumpkins so I usually do my science units based on the theme we're doing right now so like right now in my classroom we are doing birthday party and kind of to help learn about each other and the celebrations we do in our household and um, I'm doing the five senses unit um, in my science center to go with the birthday theme so if you're doing a grocery store you could do pumpkins if you're doing a farm theme you could do pumpkins if you're learning about life cycles it's great to do um, for pumpkins if you're doing Halloween or a fall theme you could do pumpkin so it's really kind of whenever it works for you in your classroom is when um, when I would do it so we're gonna do pumpkins that last week um, in or we're gonna do pumpkins in November I think that's when I have it on my plans to do it around um, Halloween for like a fall theme you guys have and enjoy the rest of your day and if you have any other questions feel free to um, just ask me and I will try and answer them best I can so you guys have a great Great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.